to another Far Bank Fly Fishing School episode. In this episode, I pick one of my favorite ways of fly fishing, fly fishing with soft tackles. Fly fishing with soft tackles is exceptionally easy to do and probably the most forgiving of all fishing techniques. But despite that, there are some nuances and complexities that are essential to know in order to be consistently successful in the water. So let's take a look at how you fish soft tackles in a river. Let's start the whole thing off by saying, what is a soft tackle? A soft tackle, traditionally called a spider in the UK, a soft tackle is a type of fly that goes underwater and has, as the name would suggest, a lovely soft hackle. That's what this big fluffy thing is here on the front. That's a hackle. And this one, I'm pulling it out to show you, it's a very soft one and it pulses and moves tantalizingly and seductively underwater. Such a nice, awesome way of fishing. That's what a soft tackle is. Soft tackles come in a variety of ranges. The traditional soft tackle is literally a hackle and a body. But as people expand on the soft tackle range and tie more flies and catch more fish and get into it, soft tackles become a little bit more advanced. You can get some soft tackles that have a bead on the front end like this. That's a bit of weight to get down. You get some soft tackles that have tails. Traditional soft hackles don't have tails, but some soft hackles have tails. And generally speaking, when you get your selection of soft hackles, like I've got here in this box, you've got a variety of soft hackles, you want to cover a lot of bases. So you'll find you're going to get some very large soft hackles like this thing here. This is like a size six, really large soft hackle, big one. But again, you're going to find hatches and times when you want to fish small soft tackles. And so you're going to want some tiny ones. This is a little baitish has soft tackle. It's probably a size 20. So as you get into your soft tackles, you do need a selection of soft tackles in sizes, in colors, and some with beads, and some without beads, but always have the traditional soft tackle. So that's what a soft tackle is. Now, Let's go to the next chapter and take a look at when and why you'd fish a soft tackle. The why you fish a soft tackle is pretty simple, to be fair. It is the easiest way to fish a river. And I say that in that you can be a really poor caster, somebody who's never fly fished before, not a great caster. You could take kids out and they can flop the line around and it lands six or eight feet in a puddle of mess and the water in front of them. And then the current washes the line straight and then washes the line around and they'll get a grab. Whenever I teach young kids fly fishing, I always start with a soft tackle because there really is no easier way of fishing. Just chuck it out, swing around and catch a fish or not. So that's a very good way. But fly fishing isn't always about easy ways. Other reasons to fish the soft tackle is that there's probably no better way of searching the water, finding fish. When you dry fly fish, you find a fish and you target it. When you nymph fish, you find a section and you target the section. But when you don't really know where to fish, fishing a soft tackle is very, very effective. You can start at the top of one pool, stand on your side of the river, cast to the other side of the river, let the line swing around in the current, back to your side, then you take a step down, cast to the other side, let it swing round, take a step down and repeat. So you can start at the top of a pool and you can get out at the bottom of the pool and you cover the entire length of the pool and the entire width of the pool. Very, very effective technique at searching the water and finding fish. So that's another reason to fish the soft tackle. One more, and perhaps my reasoning, is the tug is the drug. I've done a lot of steelhead fishing and a lot of salmon fishing in my life, and maybe that's why I love trout fishing with soft tackles so much. I love that cast out, and out of the blue, you get a grab. You get a pull on the end of the line. It could be a four-inch minnow. It could be a 24-inch monster. You don't know where in it's come. You don't know where it's going to come. You don't know how big it is. It's just a surprise, and I love that surprise element of fly fishing. So the tug is the drug. A lot of people fish soft tackles because of that unknown surprise. 
And while I'm talking about soft tackles being subsurface flies, one really good thing to remember about soft tackles is they are very effective when you get a big hatch of dry flies. And I'll explain. There's a fly called a betis, blue-winged olive. And sometimes you get just clouds of them, hundreds and thousands of them floating down the river and fish gulping them down all over the place. And in those situations, you'd probably correctly put on a dry fly, a betis, and cast to those rising fish. Well, your fly is one amongst 10,000. The chance of it being eaten and seen are way, way slimmer. So in those situations, when I have massive hatches and fish just happily feeding, I love fishing the soft tackle because now you're presenting a fly differently, underwater, swinging past the nose of a fish, and they pay a lot more attention to that than they will to your one fly amongst 10,000. So a very good technique, not only for searching the water, but in, in big hatches when lots of fish are feeding. So really that's the why, that's the why and the when I would fish a soft tackle and I would recommend you try the soft tackle game. Now let's take a look at the kind of gear you need to set up to fish soft tackles successfully in a river. You can certainly fish soft tackles with your regular trout outfit, no problem at all. But if you become addicted to it and you really want to specialize and thoroughly enjoy soft tackle fishing, then there's a few items of gear I'd recommend you get that will increase that chance of catching a fish and your satisfaction doing so. Generally with soft tackles, you use lighter and less strong tippet materials. You want your leaders and lines to move very seductively in the water. So you tend to use lighter weight, lighter strength materials. And as a result of that, you can break off in a lot of grabs. So, a couple of things. One, go to a lighter rod. This is a four-weight rod, so instead of a five-weight rod, you can absolutely utilize a four-weight rod. That lighter weight rod is a little bit more forgiving on those lighter tippet materials. Or you can get a specifically slower action rod like this Trout LL. This is a five-weight, but it's a much slower action, a little bit more forgiving and therefore protective of those light leaders and tippet materials that you will be using with your soft tackles. In terms of lines, well, soft tackles are very lightweight. They land gently on the water if you cast them right. So when you find a fly line that's for it, what you want to do is choose a fly line that has long front tapers. This is hands down my favorite soft tackle line for a couple of reasons. It's called a single-handed spay. One reason is that when you turn it around and look at the picture on the back, you'll see it says the front taper is 18 foot long. Oh, what bliss. How softly does that present the leader and the soft tackles on the water? Doesn't scare your fish at all. Second, it's a great line for roll casting, spade casting. And when you get into soft tackles, those are much more effective casts than your overhead cast. But the other reason I like this type of line is because when you do fish soft tackles, soft tackles tend to be unweighted very lightweight, and when you cast them in the current and they swing around in the current, because they're so light, those flies will skate right up in this top layer, even on the surface of the water. And you'll get a lot more fish getting those soft tackles down. Maybe eight to 10 inches, maybe two to three feet, all depends, but you'll get a lot more success fishing soft tackles a little bit deeper. So the other reason I like that single-handed spay line is there is an of the option of it that has an intermediate sinking front end. This is the same line, but it's a floating line. You can see the peachy color here, but it's what's called an FHI, float, hover, intermediate. So the floating line transitions to a little hover, very slow sinking section to an intermediate sinking section, and those sinking front ends swing that soft tackle at a deadly depth of about two foot down, 18 inches to two foot. Awesome, awesome soft tackle line. Now, not everybody wants to go and buy a specialty line just to fish soft tackles. And if you're in that crowd, there are still ways to get around it. And those ways are to fish things called Versa leaders. And this is a selection of Versa leaders here. Versa leaders, let me just show you what Versa leaders are. They're seven foot long and they sink. This one says four IPS. This sinks at four inches per second. Basically, you add a Versa leader to the front of your floating fly line and you turn your floating fly line into a sinking tip. Wonderful for soft tackles, just get that down a little bit deeper. And when you get into your soft tackles, you wanna make sure you have a selection of sink rates for different speeds of pools and different depths. There's a four inch per second, there's a six inch per second, 
That's a faster sinking one. Here's a floating version if I do want to skate a fly. And here's my favorite of all, one and a half inches per second. That's an intermediate. That swings a soft tackle down about eight inches under the surface film. So if you have your regular floating fly line and you get an intermediate versa leader, that's an excellent, excellent setup. And gradually you evolve to get all the sink rates. So all those will help get your, your soft tackles a little bit deeper. And then on the end of those versa leaders, you attach your regular leaders or your, re your regular tippet material. And when you talk about the tippet material and leaders, the you can use a fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon is a really good material because it is a little denser than nylon and therefore will sink a little bit deeper. It's also pretty well invisible underwater, so that's pretty good. But fluorocarbons tend to be a little stiffer material. And so my go-to material for soft tackles is a very, very supple one. This is called Supple Flex. It's just super soft. And so my currents wave and waft those flies in the water, whatever microcurrent there is, I get a lot more movement underwater with a very, very supple material. So for me, I love sop supple flex on the end of my Versa leaders and uh, utilize that. And that's your standard outfits. But in addition to that, if you get into soft tackles, probably a couple of other things I'd suggest you get. We'll look at that in the very next chapter. This is a thing called a tippet ring. I'm gonna show you rigging in a moment. And we'll see what tippet rings are, but if you get a selection of tippet rings, and then perhaps the other good thing to have in your packet is some clips, little fly clips, and I'll show you exactly why in the very next chapter. So your rod, reel, and line, those are basic. Box of soft tackles, fluorocarbon or supplement leader material, and then a couple of accessories like that. And really, you've got everything you need to be a successful soft tackle angler. So now we've talked about the gear, Let's take a look at how you'd rig it and what the best setups are, what are the most effective technique and setups that I use when I fish soft tackles. And we'll look at that right now in the very next chapter. There's a number of rigs that I use when I'm soft tackling. Most of them are gonna be based off a sink tip. Here's that Versa leader we talked about. And on the end of the Versa leader, you can see I've got a little bit of tippet looped on and my fly. And my rule of thumb with this is the faster the sinking the Versa leader, the shorter the section between the fly and the Versa leader. So on this fast sinking one, I might have two foot between fly and leader. And on an intermediate, I'll probably have eight or nine feet to the fly. Just what I like. And that's a single rig. Far more effective than that is a tandem rig. Do check your regulations before you go and set up a tandem rig and make sure you're allowed to fish two flies. But if you are allowed to fish two flies, this one is my go-to everywhere I go. I'll have a Versa leader on this end or that single-handed space sinking line. I've got that tippet ring we showed you in the previous chapter. And off the tippet ring, usually, I would have about three feet to this fly. This is called a Carey Special, big fly. I catch so many fish on that one. And then I have about eight inches hanging down from the tippet ring to my small fly which in this case is a sow bug, a tan sow bug. And that tandem rig here has caught me far more fish than any other soft tackle rig. Wonderful, wonderful way to go. So where you're allowed to, set up a tandem rig with a tippet ring and attach to your Versa leader. One thing that's important to know about soft tackles is that because they're light, the knot you use is pretty important. This fly is tied on with a regular improved clinch. And the problem with an improved clinch is it's very easy through a cast or through water currents or something for the knot to slide around to the side. And that means when you cast your fly out, look how that sits and hangs in the water. It'll spin and twist and fish utterly unnaturally in the current. That can happen with an improved clinch. So when you really want to get into soft tackles, there's a couple of options. One, you can learn a loop knot. We'll go back to this rig here and you'll see that this fly is tied on with a small little loop called a non-slip loop knot. That means the fly will fish much better. If you don't know how to tie that, check out our streamer episode, and that will tell you all about how to tie this non-slip loop knot. Or another thing you can do is you can just tie on one of those fly clips we showed you in the picture, and this fly is tied on with a fly clip, and if I hold the fly clip, look how much movement that fly can get. It's not stuck, which the improve clinch will do. So those are little things that will certainly help you out with your soft tackle rigs. 
And once you've got all your rigs, next thing to do, let's go down to the water and take a little look at some of the places fish are likely to lie and where you should be fishing your soft tackles. When you get to the water and you want to fish the water with the soft tackles, you want to understand kind of the key areas you're most likely to catch fish, the percentage water as it's called. You're looking for certain depth and a certain speed. And the ideal depth is somewhere between about a foot to about four foot in depth. You generally want to stand in the shallow water and cast into the deep water. You can see Whitney here, look at that. She's standing in that nice shallow water, putting a line into that deeper water and then swinging it towards her. That's an excellent area to concentrate your soft tackles on. With regard to speed, probably the ideal speed of water is something about walking pace not roaring down, not glassy slow. You can fish soft tackles in those speeds and change your techniques, but if you just want it simple, you want something about walking speed, something that's got a little bit of a wave and a little bit of a ripple like that on the water, this is ideal swinging water. And you can see here, in fact, look at this piece of water. This is a lovely bit of water. You've got a nice dark colored background on the far side. That's a deeper water. That's what's called a drop-off. That dark color indicates it's deep, and that light, bright color indicates it's shallow. And then right here, I would cast across that deep water, land the fly in that deep water, and swing it into that shallow water. That's what's called a current seam. You can see the seam here, that little bit of current that indicates there's a change of current speed. And those seams are just deadly areas to concentrate throwing your soft tackles. So really, Concentrate on that. Look at the water when you get to the water. Look for those high percentage areas and spend most of your time fishing those high percentage areas and you catch a lot more fish doing that. And talking of catching fish, well, let's actually get down to the river and now look at how to fish a soft tackle. Now, down to the water. Finally, we can get on the water and show you what soft tackling is all about. And really, there's a couple of options. There's the easiest way in the world, the downstream soft tackle, the swing. And there's the, probably the most difficult way in the world of fishing, upstream soft tackling. We're gonna start with the easy one first because what I like about the downstream swing, the downstream soft tackle, is that you can be the world's worst caster and you make the most terrible cast that lands by your toes. And you just wait and the current washes away from you and then starts to sweep it around and you can catch fish. So it's a great way if you're taking out anybody who's a beginner who wants to get into a little bit of fly fishing and doesn't want anything technical about keeping line tight and, and watching it dry flies and indicators, you just take them soft tackling, put on a couple of soft tackles that we talked earlier, throw it across the river and swing. And basically you get in a piece of water at the top of a, a nice stretch and after every single cast, you go down a step and make it happen again and go down a step and make it happen again. So basically you're gonna move your way down the river swinging as it's called. As I said, there's probably no easier way. And I don't mean easy in terms of catching fish. I mean, just easy as in how simple is this type of fishing? Now, if you get into it and you start swinging and you start to analyze, hey, I wanna become a slightly better swinger. I wanna have a better way of presenting my flies. Then you remember this acronym that is MAT. M stands for mend, A stands for angle, and T stands for tension. And those are three things you adjust as you swing your line down the river. The mend is a very simple thing. You're trying to get a fairly straight line throughout the whole swing. And sometimes there's odd currents that puts the bend in the line, a big bow. And when you see that happening, you throw a bow the exact opposite to that mend, that, that curve, and that's called a mend. And that readjusts, if you like, and gives you a nice straight swing again. So the mend's an essential part of swinging soft tackles. The A, well, that stands for the angle. And very simply, when you make a cast straight across the river, you have a full force of the current pushing on it. So the line swings with good momentum and good speed. When you cast at a very narrow angle to the current, there's very little current pressure pushing on that line, and so it swings quite a bit slower. And you pele with that. Like, let's assume you arrive at two pools. One pool is super slow, but it's the right pool to fish. Because the water's slow, what you do is you have to make that swing speedy. That means you cast straight across the current. 
and every ounce of current pressure and speed there is, is pushing that line around. It makes those soft tackles move and comes to life. And then the next pool you fish might be just racing down. You might have a big rapid with lots of waves and white water, and the water speed itself is fast. Well, you certainly don't want a fast swing in fast water. And so what you do is you take advantage of that angle, the A, and make a cast very fine to the current, and that fine angle will give you a much slower swing. So that's the A of, of the mat. And the last one, the T, well, that's tension. And really what that means is really the tension between you and the fly. And very simply, when you reduce tension, i.e. if I just give it a bit of slack, what will happen is the moment you give slack into that line, the flies relax and start to sink. And then opposite of that, when you tighten the line, then the flies will lift up. So again, you play with that. You want a deep swing, guess what you're gonna do? Give slack, lots of slack, 10, 12 feet of slack before you start the swing. And then the flies will sink down and you'll get a nice deep swing. But maybe you want a shallow swing because fish are rising, you're fishing right up in surface film. And in that case, you might even work the fly, you might even just pull the fly in, tightening the line to make the flies rise in the, in the water column. So you play with that mat as you work your way down the pool, kind of understand what speed it's swinging. And if it, you're thinking it's a bit fast, make a finer angle. If you're starting to see that bend in the line, put a mend in. If you think your flies are too shallow, pay out slack. So it's a calculating game. As I said, you kind of think your way through. And once you've got the rhythm and you're in the run and you're fishing way down, the next thing is, how do you catch a fish? Well, at one point in time, as you're swinging around, you're gonna feel this electric shock of a tug on the end of your line. That's what you're waiting for. Almost invariably, when you're swinging soft tackles downstream, you will feel every single eat. You don't have to look at anything. You can totally be, talking to somebody on the bank, or I don't know, looking at your watch or playing video game or something. I don't know what you would, but you could, and you'll feel these tugs. And the essence of that is the moment you feel something, set the hook. That's what this thing is so easy. You'll feel the take, it's a really easy technique. You have these bad casts and they swing out. So the downstream soft tackle, as I said, is so easy to technique to just be out there fishing. You'll feel the grabs. A lot of the times the fish will hook themselves. They'll turn, on, turn away and hook themselves, but you should still set the hook. Whilst that might be the easiest thing, as I said at the beginning, the hardest is the upstream soft tackle. So let's go and take a look at what the upstream soft tackle is all about. The upstream soft tackle perhaps my most favorable way of fishing for trout. Technically difficult for casting, for keeping in touch with the fly, for detecting the take. And as a result, as somebody who's fly fished a lot and caught a lot of fish, I like those challenges. So don't go into this if you're a novice because it's a pretty hard technique to master. Another reason you may want to fish the upstream soft tackle is to fish that are feeding. Feeding fish are happily munching away on flies that are floating down in the natural speed of the current. When you fish the downstream, you're swinging across the current, swinging across any fish. And they like that. But when they're feeding on dry flies, they don't want that. They want a natural drift. So you'll get that better by fishing upstream soft tackle. So that's the why. How do you do it? Well, in a nutshell, you're gonna cast upstream. That part's obvious, hence the name. The simplest thing that that means is that when you cast upstream, the current is washing the line towards you, creating slack. You have to retrieve your line to keep the line tight. You always want to be in touch with your fly. Let's say the current's coming down to you at four miles an hour. If you retrieve at four miles an hour, you're gonna keep in touch with the fly. Exactly right. If you retrieve at three miles an hour, you're a bit slower than the current and the line is gonna wash past you. You're gonna get a pile of slack. And when a fish does eat in your hook set, you miss it because there's too much slack. So keeping in touch with that fly is a pretty essential part of what makes this hard. The other thing that makes this hard is detecting the take. Your fly is underwater. It's not like a dry fly. It's not like a nymph and indicator. We have an indicator to watch. It's underwater. And when the fish facing up river take that fly, invariably they swim up, grab the fly and turn back towards you. Underwater. You don't see a thing. You don't feel a thing. How on earth do you know there's a fish on there? Well, the subtle signs are one, 
If you can see your leader, you'll just see your leader slightly move in the current, set the hook. You might also just see the current bulge slightly where the fish has turned, set the hook. You will not feel a take. So bear that in mind. Now you can improve the odds by putting on a little indicator and watching the indicator and that'll help you see the leader check. Kind of like nymphing, but I like to use really, really subtle indicators for this so that they don't land with such an impact and they're less visible to the fish. They also have less influence on the current. So we have a real one called a Kahuna LT, which is a very, very thin pipe, sits on the leader and is very, very subtle, but very, very sensitive. And that's an excellent setup for fishing upstream soft tackles. Now you can fish upstream soft tackle kind of just blind, randomly hitting spots where you think the fish are. But the, really the most effective way of doing this is to find some rising fish. Particularly rising fish when there's lots and lots of food coming down and there's lots and lots of heads feeding. Because if there's lots of heads feeding, there's a lot of flies going down and you cast a dry fly in that situation and you might have your fly part of 500 flies. And what's the chances of the fish taking your fly over one of the others? Pretty slim. So in those situations, I love, I really love fishing the soft tackle. I'm under the water. I'm making sure my fly is out of that 500 and I'm trying to entice the fish. And one of the best things you can do to that, if you remember the soft tackle, it's called a soft tackle for a reason. It has a nice soft hackle around the head. And what you want to do is you want that hackle pulsing, really pulsing in the water. That gives it life. Fish love that pulse thing, not a dead drifted one. So what that means is you've got to work the fly, you've got to retrieve the fly. And when you're fishing upstream, one great technique is to, as you retrieve, is to twitch the rod as you're pulling the fly back. And that twitching is making the hackles pulse in the water. And you can see my friend Whitney here, she's fishing perfectly upstream soft hackle. Those wiggles, all that is doing is getting those hackles to pulse. That's exactly what you want. So as I said, it is a hard technique. And the hard part, again, is the fact you're casting upstream, so you have to deal with this slack, four miles an hour, strip it four miles an hour. You're having to deal with the fact that you've got a fish turning towards you and you're not gonna see anything obvious in terms of the hook set. If in doubt, set the hook. And also you've got to get this little pulsing, this little movement of the fly. So again, it is probably the most difficult river trout fly fishing technique I know, but it's highly rewarding and I hope one day you'll try it and get out on the water and fish the soft tackles upstream and just get one fish and give yourself a good pat on the back because you certainly earned that one. So there you have it, the core techniques and tactics that you as a fly fisher should know in order to become successful at fishing soft tackles. I hope you've learned enough in this episode to approach the river with confidence and know what to do with the soft tackle. As always, I want to end this episode with a friendly reminder to do your part in keeping the river clean and the fish healthy. Look after the environment, leave no trace of your visit to the water and treat the fish you catch with the utmost respect. I hope you enjoyed this episode and also hope to see you on the water one day putting your newfound soft hackle skills to great use. Thanks a lot for watching.